Hey guys, it's Alexandra. I'm so excited to be talking to Gabrielle Stone today. She is an actress who you may know from her series Speak No Evil or her movie Cut. Um, she also, her mother also um, played the mom in E.T., which is cool. And that's not what we're going to be talking about today, That We're going to be talking about her book um, that she just wrote called Eat, Pray, Fuck My Life. And it's all about how she got out of a marriage where her husband was cheating on her and she was in another very complicated romantic relationship with someone else following that and sort of to on on this mission to find herself and find self-love she went to Europe by herself and backpacked and she you know narrates all the adventures that she went on and all the things that she learned about life so I think you guys will really enjoy listening to her and I hope you read her book I got it on audible and it was super good. So Audible is a great way to go to if you're not into like read reading. Um, it really is good to listen to it too. So I hope that you enjoy and you can subscribe below for more videos. All right. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Your little setup is so cute. Thank you. Oh, um, I love it. So, so happy to meet you. I just finished listening to your book this morning. Oh, how great. And I as a 20 something especially i loved it so much i thought it was awesome oh i'm so happy did you listen on the audiobook mm -hmm. oh that's so cool it has such a special place in my heart yes i feel like listening to it just adds more <laughs> totally <laughs> to totally because you hear my ridiculous like you know <laughs> don't avoid saying all the ridiculous things <laughs> so i'm sure as you you know talked about in your book you have to tell, you've had to tell your story a million and a million plus times. Yes. So I hate to be the person to ask you to tell it again, but <laughs> give me, um, you know, and others, people who haven't read the book or listened yeah. to it, a recap of, you know, what your story is and what the book is about. Totally. So I was married for almost two years. And in 2017, I found out that my husband was having an affair with a 19 year old for six months, filed for divorce, left. Really shortly after that, I met a man, we fell madly in love, had like this whirlwind romance, and he invited me to go on a month long trip to Italy with him. Booked my ticket, was over the moon excited, meeting each other's families, like totally in this blissful relationship. 48 hours before we were getting on a plane, he told me he needed to go by himself. And I was absolutely devastated, broke my heart like my ex-husband never could have done. And I had a decision to make, and that was either stay at home heartbroken or go travel Europe for a month by myself. So I decided to go and did six countries over the span of a month with a backpack and wrote a book about it. Awesome. So after reading it, you know, I sort of reflected on there, there's sort of this narrative, especially for women, I feel like that you're running away or when you travel, you're, you're escaping something or you're doing it because you need to get over something or you need to clear your head. Um, how do you think your journey might have looked different if you hadn't gone into it as vulnerable as you were? I don't think I ever would have had the balls to book a trip like that by myself. Now being on the other side of it and I've done a second solo trip by choice this time, I can't imagine not having that be a part of my life. But at the time, I had never traveled by myself for, you know, leisure. I'd gone for work and stuff, but never to just be on my own. And that was a really big fear that I've carried with me since I was a little girl and I lost my dad, was that I'm not okay by myself and I always need people around me. So this was the universe's really clear way of making me go face that. Um, that being said, I don't think it's a bad thing when people go through things to just want to leave and and run away because it's not it's not really running away you're running to go find different parts of yourself um so for that i encourage it um but i think if i wouldn't have been so vulnerable and i would have had some more time to process what was actually going on in my life i might not have gone and that trip totally changed my life it it put me on a different career path um and it really helped me heal a lot of stuff so I can't imagine if I wouldn't have gone. Yeah. And one of, I think, the most interesting parts of this book is you go through sort of these consistent, superficial, authentic, and subconscious thoughts, sort yeah. of 
what what it looks like what it is and then what it really is like deep down how do you think that concept changed before you went on the trip and after um so i actually came up with that technique that i refer to as the thought onion while i was on the streets of london um because i had had this amazing magical day and then i had gotten these messages from the guy who broke up with me before europe and I totally went into this tailspin of like being upset and being angry. And then I got so pissed off at myself that I was so upset and so angry. I was walking down the streets, having a conversation with myself in my head going, well, Gabrielle, do you want to stay pissed off and angry about it? Or do you want to figure out why you're having this reaction? And so during that like conversation that when I was strolling back to, to where I was staying in London, I, was like, okay, so what's the, what's the initial reaction I'm having? And that developed the superficial, the authentic, and the subconscious thoughts. And I remember when I got home, I wrote it down and named it the Thought Onion and was like, that's so lame, I have to change the name later. And then just never did, and it kind of stuck. Um, but it was a really valuable tool for me on my trip because I was having so many emotional reactions um if i wouldn't have had that tool to kind of figure out different things on that trip i i don't really know what i would have done it was really kind of like my through line of how i was able to dissect what i was feeling and get to a lot of things that i needed to heal mm -hmm. and i think something so interesting is that you talk about even while you're on this journey, you still have a lot of pain before and during and after. You, there's still, there's a lot of pain. Yeah. But you talk about and you post about not regretting your marriage, not people, I ask you, you know, don't you wish you never got married? And you say, no, I don't. And I'm wondering how you think self-love plays into the whole idea of regret. Oh, what a good question. Um, I think that for me personally, I knew on this whole journey that I was searching for a way to love myself. I knew that that was at the core of everything. Um, and even before I knew really how to do it and what it was, um, cause I had a really different idea of what it, what it actually is for me personally. Um, even before I knew what it was, I don't think I really regretted my marriage. I was embarrassed of the divorce at first and I was shocked and I felt really betrayed, but I never sat there going, God, I wish I never would have gotten married because ultimately it led me to doing all this healing work on myself, to writing this book and to this whole new life that I now have. But I think when you don't love yourself to actually answer the question, um, when you don't love yourself, it's harder to stand in that knowing of like, it doesn't matter that I'm embarrassed. It doesn't matter that I feel these negative emotions because I'm confident that it's gonna lead me to where I'm supposed to be. So I was lucky in the sense that I, I still was able to grasp that and hold on to that um, before I knew how to love myself. But I think once you love yourself, it really just, like solidifies that that everything is going to be okay and that it, you're going to be able to get yourself through everything mm -hmm. um and that's really invaluable when you go through some some tough situations and how do you think you know your treatment or perspective of relationships changed before you went on this trip and after did you come out of it treating your current relationships any differently than you feel like you would have in the past yeah i think the biggest thing that opened my eyes about my ex-husband and my marriage and my ex-boyfriend and that relationship was what's important in a partnership um before it was like in my early 20s when i got married it was more of a i don't want to say superficial but um not as deep as things that are valuable to me now. Um, so the relationship that I'm currently in, we have a lot of really like deep conversations and he knows all of my traumas and all of my wounds. And to be able to share those with a partner and have them take care of those 
um, like example for my ex before Europe, he knew that I had a huge fear of abandonment. He knew that that was a big thing for me. And he literally, not that he was doing it on purpose or that there weren't reasons to support what he was doing. He literally took that wound and ripped it wide open. Um, so for me now on the other side of all that, it's really, my priorities have changed with like what's important in a relationship and like that deep friendship that needs to be there in a relationship for it to work in the long term, I think. And are there any specific times or memories you can remember making those realizations? There's so many little memories that you mentioned throughout the book. Yeah. What, what would you say are some that you still think about often? Um, oh, that's a good question too. I've done so many of these interviews and they're always kind of similar and this is really great. Um, I think for being on the trip, the, the ones that I look back and remember most um, were probably the realizations I came to about um, my sexual uh, relationships with people and how I would use that to kind of make myself feel wanted and safe. Um, that was a huge realization for me that I continued to work on when I came home. Um, and with my current boyfriend, I've been very open and vocal about that. So he, he knows that that was a thing in my past relationships and he's very um, aware of making sure that I feel comfortable and taken care of in that department. Um, and then I, a lot of, things came after my trip like a lot of realizations when i realized what was important came from being with who i'm with now and and seeing like oh i don't feel panicked i don't feel anxiety i don't feel um like i have to always be on um i can just really drop in and be myself um so he really made a lot of those come to light for me. Um, and when you're with someone like that, and then you look back on the other people you've been with, it's a drastic comparison when you're, when you're on the other side. <laughs> yeah. And I think just the way the universe works, I happened to come across your book at like a very weird time in my life where, although with the situation of COVID and everything, it's not an option for a lot of people to go out and find themselves but in such a mental place where like, that is what I feel like so many people my age, especially anyone really, anyone, but specifically the 20 somethings bracket, have that urge to just, you know, things aren't going right for such a long time. And then you just eventually need to realize, you know, I'm in this bubble. No, like I need to see what else there is out there. Yeah. So what do you think is a good way, sort of like on a small scale, for people to be able to develop that self-love and that identity without having to travel? Um, for me, you know, although the travel changed my life and gave me so many things I'm so thankful for, I didn't really grasp my version of self-love until a while after I came back and continued to do work on myself and continued to heal from everything. Um, so that for me, what I what I put in the epilogue, which is what I call the self-love cocktail, that is my advice to anybody because you can really do it no matter if it's COVID, no matter if, you know, you're, you have the means to, you can really do it for yourself and commit to it every single day. So what I tell people to do is list out the things that they're capable of giving themselves to make themselves happy, that makes their soul happy. So for me, that was dancing, creating, meditating, um, going to the gym, which obviously you can't do now, but you can work out at home. Um, and then you commit to giving yourself those things every single day. And at first, you know, you can only do a couple, um, one or two of them. And then you commit to that. And a couple weeks down the road, you start adding in other things until you're able to start consistently doing that list every single day. And I woke up, uh, you know, a month and a half, two months later and was like, oh my God, I feel so much better. And it was because I was loving myself. People have this warped idea that loving themselves means looking in the mirror and saying, oh my God, I love you, Gabrielle. You're so wonderful. And if you can do that without feeling like a crazy person, more power to you, but I can't. Um, and when I finally realized that loving yourself just means giving your soul the things that 
it it's happy about and makes you happy that put it back into my control and it was like oh this is something i can do for myself every day and i have control over it um and it really did change my life and i think it's so interesting how this has come to be i see you posting about like who would play you guys who play the characters in a movie is that is are you planning on developing the book into a movie eventually so we're just in the very very early stages of pitching it as a series um i think it's too much to cram into one film and the readers would be pissed off um so i think we're gonna aim to pitch it as an eight to ten episode like bingeable series um but again the very very early stages of that and it's a long process but I mean, it would be my dream to see it on the screen and come to life and just to get to go back to all those awesome places again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And what are you personally working on that people can look forward to? So I'm slowly writing book two. Um, that's always the question I get asked right away. And it kind of just depends on timing and if everybody signs off on it because these are real people in real life. Um, and I want to respect that. But, uh, so I've been writing that. I've been doing a little bit of acting. It's slowed down, obviously, because of COVID. I did a film right before we went into quarantine um, that should be out sometime next year. And uh, I just directed um, a, a short that we shot all social distanced in quarantine. So we're releasing that, I think, next month. And um, yeah, it's been it's been wild trying to figure out how to fill that creative well while we're in quarantine. Um, I wasn't able to write a lot at first, but that's finally lifted. So i am been been writing a lot more, which has been nice. And um, the, the book has been keeping me really busy and like staying engaged with all the interviews and the content I've been doing has been, it's been nice to connect with all the readers while we've been in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what kind of stuff can people expect from the second book? Um, so it is going to like pick up pretty much where it left off um, and it'll cover, oh God, 2017. It'll cover pretty much two years of, of my life and the sagas with um, some of the same people, some different people, some new people. Um, and I do go on another trip. So it's, um, it's very different, but at the same time, I think it's going to answer, a, well, it will answer all the burning questions that I always get asked, like if Chris came to LA and what happened with Javier. Um, but there's also a lot of fun new things that come in. Um, so I'm excited for, for it to take shape. I've, I've written probably 40% of it so far. So we still have a ways to go, but I know where it begins and where it ends. It's just about getting it all out now. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. I think um, this is coming out at such a good time. People are starting to, you know, recognize this first book at such a good time when you can kind of fill your travel void without leaving, but then you're also learning a ton of stuff. So it's like really, really uh, great work on that. I think it's an awesome read and I definitely recommend it to my friends. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'm dying to travel again too. It's We've been doing little trips that are COVID approved, like driving up to Mammoth to go camping and stuff, but it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. You're so beyond welcome. And thank you for all the awesome questions. This yeah. is like so nice to have someone that really like put some thought in. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it was great read. It really resonated with me. So I appreciate you being brave enough to put that all out there for everybody. I know that's such a hard thing to do. It's hard to even talk about it with friends sometimes, let alone put it in a whole book for everyone to read. So, you well, know, it's strong it's, woman. If it's connecting with you and other people, um, then I've done my job and it's well worth it. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's good to talk to you. You too. Bye. Bye.